Hi everyone, I'm Rogério Feres. I'm a principal scientist and research manager at the MIT IBM Watson AI Lab. And I'm gonna be presenting some of the work that my team is doing on analyzing the transferability of contrasted representations. So as you know, there has been amazing progress in visual recognition recently using massive label data sets. Uh, the last paper I saw in archive has a method that uh, uses 3 billion weekly labeled images for training a vision transformer with 2 billion parameters, and it achieves 90% top one accuracy in ImageNet. So this is very impressive. However, doing well on ImageNet is not enough. And the reason is that the visual world is comprised of so many different application domains for which ImageNet models may not generalize well. Examples include medical diagnosis, images from drones, scientific images, document analysis, and many other application domains. Now, as we move towards visual recognition models that are more general, generalizable, there are two main challenges that we need to address. One is how to train models using limited label data. And as you know, in many of these application domains, data might be just hard to get or data notation might be too costly, or we may face issues with privacy or usage rights. And also the second challenge is that images from this domain, they might be just very different from ImageNet. So we have a large domain shift. Now motivated by these challenges, we have recently created a benchmark uh, called Cross Domain Few Shot Learning Benchmark. And this work is described in our ECCV 2020 paper, uh, which is called a broader study of cross-domain fusion learning. Now this benchmark has a source domain, which is ImageNet. So here we have sufficient um, training data with labels. And we also have a set of target domains with decreasing similarity to ImageNet. So here we have data sets like crop disease, which has image of, of plants, uh, Euroset, which has satellite images. Uh, I seek with uh, skin cancer images and chest X with uh, X ray images. Now, these data sets they have categories that do not overlap with ImageNet. So, we, we have a disjoint uh, label space. So, during training, we can optimize models in the source domain. Uh, and during tests, we have just a few examples like five shot or one shot or 20 shot where we can use to adapt the model to each target domain. Now we have done extensive analysis uh, comparing state-of-the-art models based on meta-learning, uh, fine-tuning, and also we proposed a new technique which does uh, transfer learning from multiple pre-trained models. Now the key takeaway from our work is that simple fine-tuning methods outperform all state-of-the-art meta learning methods by a large margin in this benchmark. This is related to another paper uh, which appeared at ECCB 2020, which is called Rethinking Few Shot Image Classification, A Good Embedding is All You Need. And in, in this work, uh, they proposed a very simple baseline, which also outperforms complex uh, meta learning methods. The baseline is very simple. You just use a pre-trained embedding model, so a frozen ImageNet model in order to extract features. And then you train a linear classifier, for example, logistic regression on your few shot task using these features. So that's a very simple approach that achieves the best results on standard data sets like mini ImageNet and tiered ImageNet for few shot classification. And similar conclusion has been made by other works and authors as well in the last couple of years. Okay, so a good embedding is very important for few shot classification. And a promising direction for finding a good embedding is through contrastive representations, which as you know, have been receiving a lot of attention recently in the context of self-supervised learning. So there are many methods out there like MoCo, Sinclair, uh, Bio, Suave, and so on. And they're all based on taking an image, producing uh, a pair of images through data augmentation. And this is the positive pair. And then you learn an embedding, which basically um, get these feature representations of the positive images close to each other while pushing 
all the images, the negative examples, fall apart. Now, despite the success and the progress made uh, in the field with uh, contrastive representations, it is still not clear how these representations, which are learned on ImageNet, they transfer to other domains. So this is the question that I want to address in this talk. Now, in order to answer uh, this question, I'll show a comprehensive study that we conducted uh, comparing five different methods with the following loss function. So we have supervised cross entropy loss, which is very standard, uh, self-supervised contrastive based on MOCO v2, supervised contrastive, and also a combination of these losses. So if you see here on the left, we have a illustration which shows the combination of uh, cross entropy and self-supervised contrastive. And this is then uh, similar to a multitask uh, learning uh, way where we have two branches which are attached to the shared backbone and one of the branches optimizes uh, the cross entropy loss and the other branch optimizes the self-supervised contrastive loss. And similarly, we combine uh, the supervised contrastive and self-supervised contrastive loss, as you can see here in the illustration uh, on the right, using the same um, multi-branch approach. Now, as base data set, we have used ImageNet 1K, and for downstream tasks, we have tested on 12 data sets of very different domains, including natural satellites, symbolic, medical, illustrative, and texture data. We use ResNet 50 as our model, and the evaluation protocol contains uh, both linear evaluation over a fixed uh, network, as well as uh, fine tuning the, the whole network model. And I'll show um, experiments on both many shot learning and, and few shot learning. So here are the data sets that we consider. So as I said, we have uh, many different domains, natural images, we have crop disease data set, flowers, deep weeds. For satellite images, we have Eurosat. Um, we have digits like Omniglot, SVHN, uh, medical images like iSeq, illustrative, texture, and, and so on. Uh, you can see that we also have these data sets with different training and test sizes, and also a, a different number of classes or categories. So here is the first experimental result that I want to highlight, which is linear evaluation. So basically, in the linear evaluation mode, we are just uh, pre-training all this model with different losses in uh, the ImageNet uh, data set. And then we freeze the features of the model and just plug a linear classifier on top in order to learn in the target uh, domains that we are considering. So you can see here uh, in this plot, uh, we have in the X axis, each one of the data sets and in the Y axis, the top one uh, accuracy. And there are two main uh, conclusions here. First, contrastive models, they consistently perform better in transfer learning than cross entropy models. And this is especially true when um, you consider data sets that are very different from ImageNet, like SVHN or Omniglot, for which the cross entropy model performs uh, very poorly. The second conclusion is that combining self-supervised contrastive learning loss with cross entropy or supervised contrastive loss improves transfer learning performance. So you can see here, we have a boost of 81.8% um, compared to 76.44%. Um, um, uh, so it's a boost of about 5% uh, compared with traditional cross entropy. Um, optimization. We have also done uh, experiments on uh, fine tuning the whole network model. And here the conclusion is different. We have seen that contrastive representations all, all, only offer a slight advantage of traditional, over traditional uh, cross entropy uh, models. So you can see here we have um, a setting where we're using the full data set. And um, when, when we consider all uh, 
uh, these 12 data sets and we compute the mean accuracy across all these 12 data sets, uh, the results are pretty much close, 89 compared to 88, uh, uh, about seven. Now, if we use less data, uh, 1,000 training examples, then we have a slight advantage for um, contrastive models, um, again, of about 1%, where we have 70 compared to 69. We have also done experiments on few shot classification. And here we use mini ImageNet as the base data set and a ResNet uh, 18 model. We use the linear evaluation setting, uh, measuring accuracy with an average score over 600 uh, episodes. And we consider here uh, five shots and 20 shots. We have done experiments with more shots, but here we are just uh, showing uh, two representative um, uh, number of um, training examples. And the main conclusions that I want to highlight is first that contrastive re representations, they perform better than cross entropy across domains. So if you look here at the uh, mean accuracy across all the domains, uh, we can see that for uh, five shot, we have about 3% uh, accuracy. Um, and uh, for 20 shot, we have 71 versus uh, 67, which is about 4% uh, accuracy gain. Now, this conclusion does not hold in mini ImageNet, uh, where here self-supervised learning uh, actually has worse performance than the cross entropy uh, loss. And this is the exact same domain, which, which might um, have an advantage you know, for uh, cross entropy. And you can see that if we combine uh, the cross entropy with contrastive loss, then we get a boost. But still these results may show that uh, optimizing representations uh, on ImageNet may not be a good proc uh, proxy for the results on data sets of different domains. Now, I have shown experiments which uh, show that contrastive representations, um, they offer better uh, transfer performance in uh, most cases. However, we want to understand why uh, this happens, especially across uh, domains. Now we have uh, then the uh, TSNE visualization of the penultimate layer features of all these models on ImageNet. And you can see here that the cross entropy um, uh, clusters, they are much tighter than uh, the contrastive uh, clusters. And similar to what has been shown uh, in previous work where over regular, uh, regularized representations which have these uh, tight clusters, they may not uh, generalize well. Uh, we, we think that this could be one of the reasons why contrastive representations may transfer better to very different domains because they have larger intra-class variation. We have also done an analysis using center kernel alignment, which basically measures um, how similar two representations of different layers or stages of a residual net they, they, they are. Um, and if you see here, uh, if you uh, look at the cross entropy uh, center kernel alignment, which is measuring um, here uh, the similarity of the last stage, say the stage five with the other stages, you can see that this, uh, the similarity um, the, the, the similarity of the representations is, is, is not high, it's very low. Um, whereas for contrastive representations, uh, we have the last uh, stage much closer to the previous stage, meaning that uh, the cross entropy um, uh, representation is much more specialized at the later stages, which may um, make transfer more difficult to very different domains. We have also computed uh, the CK, CKA center kernel alignment scores um, by fixing um, the stages and comparing across models. So you can see that earlier stages or earlier layers of a ResNet model, uh, they're actually similar across all these different models, cross entropy and contrastive. But when we look at the last stage, then they are very specialized and especially here, contrastive representations, they are actually much more similar to each other than the contrastive, uh, than the cross entropy uh, representations. 
which may be an indication also why um, you know this um, contrastive representations transfer better because the cross entropy representations they are very specialized uh, on on the last uh, stages. So I want to point out that um, we have more experiments that we have done in our paper. So if you are interested, you could take a look, uh, which is called uh, a broad study on the transferability of visual representations using contrastive learning. And there we have additional experiments like um, analyzing the loss weighting effect when you balance uh, supervised and self-supervised learning, uh, the performance with respect to longer training. We have additional results on object detection and uh, and instance segmentation, robustness to image corruption, and, and more. I also want to briefly mention a paper that we published at CVPR this year, which is called Fine-Grained uh, Angular Contrastive Learning with Coarse Labels. And here we address the problem of coarse to fine fuchsia learning, where we have labels only for coarse-grained categories, but we may not have labels or we have just a few labels for fine brain categories. And related to what I have described, we have used the supervised loss for coarse grain categories together with a self-supervised learning loss for both coarse and fine brain categories. And we introduce a novel angular normalization module, which improves the synergy between these two losses. So in summary, uh, do contrastive representations transfer better? Uh, yes, but not always. So I have shown that contrastive models, they consistently perform better in the linear evaluation mode compared to cross entropy models in a wide range of domains. At the same time, when we fine tune the network parameters, then we have just a slight uh, performance gain. And it's possible that when we have the same domain, for example, in mini image net, uh, self-supervised uh, representations of they may perform worse than cross entropy models. I have also shown that combining self-supervised contrastive learning loss with cross entropy or supervised contrastive loss improves transfer learning performance. And I have also shown an analysis of why we think these contrastive representations, they transfer better across uh, domains that are very different uh, from ImageNet. So if you want to see more details, you can take uh, a look at these uh, references, which describes the work that I just presented. And uh, I thank you very much uh, for your attention.